God is good, and He's good all the time. He's good when we see Him. He's good when we don't see Him. He's good when we feel Him. He's good when we don't feel Him. <laughs> and God is good. Amen? And He wants to be good not only in our life, but in all of our lives at the same time. That's what's amazing about God. He's not confined to what I think, what I see, what I feel, any of those things. It doesn't matter to God. It matters to God. <laughs> he, we matter to God. But, but he's, he's involved in every intricate detail of our life, even the parts that we don't like. <laughs> Amen? Welcome to Breakthrough tonight, and I'm excited about what God is doing. You know, and I don't, I don't know what platform you might be viewing this message from. Uh, you know, we, we, we're live on Fridays, and uh, on Sundays we're, we're not live, but we, we invite you to come out and visit with us. We, we invite you to be a part of uh, all that God is doing here at Breakthrough. And uh, uh, I think the best way f uh, for us to know, maybe even know that you're listening, is if you could even just send us a, an email or a message. Uh, you can look us up on uh, uh, Facebook at mybreakthrough.live, or you can look us up on YouTube or on our website at um, mybreakthrough.online. And uh, we look forward to, to not only speaking with you, but connecting with you and even partnering with you as we, uh, we r try to reach out uh, all across the world. You know, the world is not really that big. It's, uh, it's smaller than what we think it is, but yet it's bigger than, than uh, uh, this living room, okay? And so I'm, I'm excited about, about what God is doing, and I, I want to get right into the Word tonight. Um, I want to look in the uh, Old Testament, 1 Chronicles chapter 14, and uh, we're just going to look at a couple of verses tonight. Uh, uh, 1 Chronicles 14. Uh, verses 14 and 15. So 14, 14 and 15. So uh, if you look with me there real quick and then uh, we'll, we'll read together. That's our custom. We, we like to read to the Word of God together. Uh, we believe that the Word of God is how, how God speaks to us, right? The Word of God, the Bible, is the infallible Word of God and that it's alive. Uh, it's not just a book with pages and words on pages. It's, it's actually alive. The Word of God is, is God speaking. The breath is as if his, his breath is breathing into our lives. Amen? And so it's important for you to take in the Word of God every day, not just once in a while. But it, that's one reason why we like to read out loud, because I know at least you're reading two verses this week. Amen? And uh, so let's do that together. 1 Chronicles 14, verses 14 and 15. Uh, it's two small verses, and uh, I believe that we'll, we'll see something really interesting here tonight. On the count of three, we'll read together. You ready? One, two, three, go. Therefore David inquired again of God, and God said unto him, Go, not up after them, turn away from them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And it shall be, when thou shalt hear the sound of going on the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt go out to battle. For God is gone forth before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I just pray right now that you open up our hearts, our minds, our eyes, our ears. God, that we might see, hear, know, and understand something new from the Word of God today. Amen. Amen. I... Uh, uh, I want to give you just a little context of, of this portion of Scripture. You know, uh, David, uh, uh, we all know David, was he was a king at this point, uh, but David was a man after God's own heart in, in that he was constantly chasing the heart of God. I believe that's a key, really, for all of us as Christians. We should be constantly chasing the heart of God. Often in our lives we get mixed up between our ambition, our goals, our dreams, but David was after God's heart. And I think that's a key as a Christian. We should understand that, that, that we should be chasing the heart of God. Amen? In every circumstance, in every circumstance, I said that twice, in every situation, in every situation, in every relationship, in every relationship. Okay? I see you. I'm repeating myself. But, but we should be chasing the heart of God. Amen? And, uh, you know, we, we, David was the one that killed Goliath. Goliath was a Philistine, by the way. He was a Philistine that defied the armies of God, and, and David killed him. Uh, and if you go back a little further, or go forward from that story, the Goliath uh, story, David, David actually uh, won the heart 
of his wife by killing, actually King Saul at the time asked David to go kill a hundred Philistines and, and uh, bring their foreskin, okay, to, to, to purchase uh, his wife, okay, which would have, was the daughter of Saul. Uh, uh, we'll call her name Michelle. Uh, <laughs> that's what I always call her name because I don't like the way it's spelled. It's hard to understand it, but but David actually killed 200 Philistines. And he, how would you like it if, uh, if your dad, if you're, if you're a lady and your dad said, <laughs> to go, go kill 100 men and I'll let you have my daughter, you know? <laughs> I mean, back then it was different than it is now maybe, but, but I thought it was kind of, uh, 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 I, I think, a romantic, if you will, that David actually did twice what he was required to do to win the heart of his first wife. Well, I think that was amazing uh, when you think about that. Wouldn't you want a husband, ladies? that the guy did twice what he was supposed to to win your heart. Wouldn't you love that? I mean, wouldn't it, wouldn't it just be romantic? I think it would be uh, if, uh, if I was a lady and that was the case. But, but he, he, went, he went double over. I mean, he really worked hard. And uh, that's why my wife married me, actually, because she knew that I, would, uh, I was very gorgeous and beautiful. And uh, she knew that I'd work a long time. Amen? <laughs> and so I do, I do twice the work of a normal guy. Amen? <laughs> so... <laughs> So, so, so when we talk about Philistines and in a situation where David was uh, going to fight the Philistines, you know, they, they heard that David was now king, you know, his enemy. I mean, if your enemy heard that something good was going on in your life, wouldn't they do something or try to do something to, to sabotage what was going good in your life? I mean, and this is exactly what is happening in this story. Uh, the, David's arch enemy, okay, arch, uh, uh, the Philistines heard that he had become king and so they came out to fight with David. You know, they, they were going to uh, take him out. That's basically what they were trying to do. And that's what enemies do. The enemy of our soul, the devil, comes to take us out. He's looking for a way. As a matter of fact, the scripture even says he's, a, he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he, whom he may devour. And that's why it's so important that we gather tonight, even tonight in this, in this room or, or on, the, on the websites or wherever we are, wherever you're looking at us. It's important that we come together because the, 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 the sheep or that is in the middle of the flock is the one that is safest, amen? It's the ones that get out on the edge and get away from everybody that you have to worry about because they're, they're, they're easy to pick off. The enemy will come and take you away. And, uh, and it wouldn't be a big deal because you're not in the middle of the flock. People don't notice that. But I'm telling you that God notices, notices that in you and he's trying to get you to a place, right, where you'll come into the flock. Come, come all the way in. Don't, don't stay out on the edge. Don't, don't, don't stay home from church. Come to church, okay? We, we would love to have you. Let me give you a, the first word tonight. Uh, I thought it's, a, it's an amazing word, one that you don't hear about very often. Uh, the word is inquire, okay? Inquire. And David did something really powerful in this story. And uh, actually, if you go up just a couple of verses, you'll see that David inquired of the Lord, should I go out and fight against the Philistines? And and, Dave, and God said, go fight. And so David went out and fought and had a great victory uh, the, the first time, okay, that he had fought with them in, this, in the context of the story. And, and, and when, they, when the Philistines fled before them, uh, they left their gods, okay, behind. And David did something really powerful. He burnt the gods. <laughs> he got, took and gathered them all together and he burned them up. And, and he, he, uh, he, because his God was greater than their God. I mean, if we could just have a little posturing cer ceremony here tonight, whose God is greater? <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it the God of the Bible, or is it all of the other gods that we, that we worship? Like, maybe it might look like money, it might look like fame, it might look like fortune, it might look like uh, success, it might look like uh, whatever it looks like, but I'm going to tell you that there is one God that's above all other gods in this world. Amen? His name, he has a name. His son, he sent his son into the world, his name is Jesus, and he came into the world, and he is greater, because greater is he that is in me, right? Jesus is in me than he that is in the world, amen? amen. <laughs> but, but I thought it was kind of funny that David was actually asking, for, uh, asking God a question, because he had, he had beat the giant. You, you think that, that, that because uh, God had given David the victory once over the Philistine giant, and then God, God had given the victory again, over this uh, army and, and gave him a great victory that, that David would have not asked the question again, you know, should I go out again against this army? Uh, he, he said, I've been victorious every single time I fought these guys, right? 
Uh, every time they've come in against me, I've always been victorious. But David stopped before being presumptuous, right? And, and going after the army again, he stopped to inquire of the Lord. He stopped to ask God for direction. I mean, if you're a guy, uh, it's really hard for us to ask directions. I mean, many times we'll drive in circles uh, rather than stop and ask directions. And uh, I've been there myself many times, even though my wife is telling me that I'm not, not look. You know, inqui- to inquire, though, to, 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 to inquire is just a fancy word for ask, okay? That's really what it is. Let, let's ask God uh, uh, for direction, amen? We, we should ask God for direction. All of us should come to a place where we, we are willing to ask God for direction. In James, the first chapter, uh, it says, uh, in, in the fifth verse, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally. You know, he's going to give you wisdom if you would just ask. God, God wants to give you wisdom. He wants to impart into you uh, smartness, <laughs> okay? Because God is really smart. Often, often I've said this a lot of times, but God is really smart. You know, we're only, we're only as smart as our experience, our, uh, our influence, or uh, Google, okay? <laughs> but, but God is smarter than Google. God, God has all of the answers because he's the one that created all that we see, all that we know. He's the creator, Amen. And so if we'll ask God, he will give us wisdom. And we see David do that in the story. But, but I wonder how often is it that we think we know what's best. We, we run into a situation, we run into a circumstance, and we don't ask God, what is it that you want from me? Uh, what, you, what is it that you want to accomplish in this situation? Amen? He said, uh, but let him ask in faith, it says, nothing wavering. And then it goes on to talk about uh, him that... Uh, the person that wavers, right, is like a wave tossed to and fro and is unstable in every way, in every way. There's no stability in your life if you don't know the source, amen? We need to know Jesus, okay? We need to know, we need to get into the Word of God. Uh, You know, uh, we need to inquire, right? It should be our first response in every situation is to inquire of God, what is it that you want from me, amen? What is it that you want from me? (laughs) See, what, I, I think it really comes down to this, this simple word. Uh, do you value God's opinion in your life as a Christian? Do you really value it? Because if you value it, you would go and spend time with him and listen to what he says. Amen? We would listen to what he says. Uh, <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's just ask God, but, but often we, we do what's appropriate or what we feel is appropriate at that moment. We, we, we ask God, we say, oh, I'm praying about it, but then we do what we feel is, is the best, okay? That's what, that where we go. I wanna, <laughs> I, we, want, we want Jesus or God to be our friend, right, with benefits, right? With the benefit of doing whatever it is we want to do, okay? That's what we want to do. We want, we want oh, I, I'm a Christian, but I, 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 that's, that's the benefit, right? It, but I still want to do what I want to do. And see, that's what, that's what being a, a, a Christian is not doing that, whatever it is I want to do. It's listening and doing what he says, even if it doesn't feel good at the moment. Amen? Because often, often our, our, our feelings, right, are going to lie to you every single time. Because what we feel is not what God is actually asking us to do. It's not, it's not what I feel at all. It's what he says that's more important because that's the, the appropriate response of a Christian. It's, it's opposite of what I feel, amen? It's, it's yeah. because it's what he says. I, 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 I just love the fact that David inquired. David showed us, show me, show me a leader, honestly. Show me a leader who would take the time to pray and ask God, what is it that you want me to do in this moment as a leader? Show me, show me a leader that would pray and ask God, I'll show you a successful leader. I'll show you someone who people would follow. Amen? And, and that's exactly who David was. Men followed him. Amen? Men would follow him. Not like a wave driven to and fro. I, you don't have to worry about David going this way or that way. He was, he was after God's heart. Remember, it's important to remember that. He was after God's heart. <laughs> David saw God take, take out the bear, 
David saw God take out the lion. David saw God take out the, the, the giant. David saw all of those things. He saw all of those things, but he, he, <laughs> he still took the moment, took the time to say, God, what is it you want me to do now? David knew, <laughs> David wrote the 23rd Psalm. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. He knew that God was going to provide every need, every time. Okay? It may not look the way it sh I think it should look, but he knew that he was his shepherd. Amen? That's powerful right there. His, uh, inquire of God, what is it that you want me to do now? Amen? Right now. And now, let me give you another word. It's actually two words. God said. God said. What is, it? What, what is God saying to you right now about it? Okay? About it. Because all of us have an it. We all have a circumstance. We all have a situation. We all have a person. Don't look at the one next to you. We all have a person. We all have a problem, okay, if you will, in our life. And, but, but what is God saying about it? Uh, because it's very important for you to know the answer to that question. Because if you don't know the answer, how can you move forward if you don't know the answer to that question? What did God say? Okay? Because often God speaks. <laughs> Actually, every time God speaks, every time the presence of God comes, when we're praying, when we're, when we're reading, when we're in worship, whenever the presence of God comes, it comes to create something in you. Amen? Uh, so that God could create something out of you that wasn't there before. God is the God that speaks and worlds appear. <laughs> He's the one that spoke and light appeared. Light had never been there before. I wonder what is it that God is trying to do new through you that has never been done before that we're fighting. Because we, that's what we do. We find ourselves fighting what God is trying to do in our life because we're scared of what he might say. We're, we're scared of the outcome. We're scared of the, the answer that we would receive because it's not something we're going to want to do, right? Because right. it always says, God is always asking me to give up something. He's always asking me to give up my life, <laughs> to give up my dream or give up my desires. That's what he's asking for. Let me talk to some leaders out there tonight. <laughs> who, who, who <laughs> what we do matters. Everything we do matters. What we allow in our life, what we don't allow in our life, but especially where we're going. What have we focused our eyes on? Where are we going? That's important tonight. It's important that we know what God is saying about it. Okay, whatever it is. <laughs> where we go matters and people, people are always following us. Especially when we say things like, God said. When we say, God said, we better be, make sure God said that. Amen? And we better be li listening and then stepping it out. Amen? What he says. It's important. God sends us out and, 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 he, and he's doing something new. Amen? <laughs> he, he, maybe it's just a new humility or a new, a new humble spirit, a new focus. A new, maybe it's new friends. Maybe it's a new vision. You know what? I never saw that before. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's time to change our perspective on what it is doing in our life. What is, what is the purpose of it? Amen? You know, life is not always easy. And, and uh, I, I remember uh, a time in my life when I was running away from a situation. And I was, I was driving as fast as I could, <laughs> leaving it all behind. <laughs> okay? And, and God clearly spoke to me. He said, he said, where are you going? And I, said, I gave him the excuses of why I was leaving and what I was doing this for and how come it had to be that way. And God said, turn around and go back and sit in the chair. And, and I don't want to do it. You know what? And it's not been an easy road. But, but, but God, I did it because he said, because God said. Okay? And the purposes of God maybe have yet to be revealed why I was to sit in the chair. But I'm going to tell you that God has grown me as a person. And only through that situation or that circumstance was God able to move me in and make me become who I am today. Amen? And because God said, though, and I heard what he said, and I was obedient to go and sit in the chair. Amen? I don't know what your chair is, and I don't know what your circumstance is, but, but, but that's, it's important. I, I, I found this really rare piece of scripture. And I want to, I want to show it to you tonight. If you've got a, a few moments more with me, but John 19th chapter 
verses 19 through 22. It's really kind of a, a, a weird couple of verses. I just want to, I want to quickly go, uh, just kind of graze the surface of it. But uh, Pilate uh, writes, and uh, he, he wrote, and, and it says, and I'll just read it to you. Uh, John 19, 19, it says, And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. And in verse 20, the title then read, uh, the, 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 this title then read, Many of the Jews, for the, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh into the city, and, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. <laughs> and then said this, the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of Jews, but that he said, I am the king of Jews. And Pilate said something really powerful. He said, What I have written, I have written. And, and, and I see a contrast here. Because Jesus, indeed, was the king of the Jews. He, he was the king of the Jews because God said it. I, I, I think it's really important. God said it. That was, that was, his, his, uh, he was his only purpose was to come to be king. He is the king of the kingdom. Amen? And, and I, I want to I show you, though, that, that the people diluted the word that was written. And, and Pilate said, what I have written, I have written. And, and often in our lives, because if you put it in the context that, that, that God is the author and the finisher of our faith, when you put it in the context of there, you, you, you have to understand that your life is already written out. What he has written, he has written. Amen? And the end is already done. It's already done. God, God has already written it out. And so what we do is we fight God for what he has already written. And instead of letting God be God and listening to what he has said and spoken to our life, we fight it. We fight it. We fight it. We fight it. But he has already written it. Amen. And there is peace. I'm going to tell you, there is peace in knowing that God has already written it out. And there is nothing that I can do to change what is written. <laughs> Pilate didn't change his, his writing, but how much more will God not change what he has written for us? If we would just submit, if we would just listen, if we would just walk it out. Come on, leader. Come on, leader. Let me, let me, let me give you this just before I move on. I, I, it's really powerful. But we are guilty of diluting. We are guilty of diluting what God has said. We're guilty of diluting it. We dilute it. We, we wash away. We, we, we excuse it away. I mean, we, we make all the excuses. Let me, let me move on. Let me give you a word called here. Let me give you a word called here. Can you imagine just for a second, okay? Just, just, just go with me for a second. Maybe you might have to close your eyes, but if, if you could just imagine for a second David and his troops, okay? Here's the army. Oh, he just had a great victory. We just burnt the gods of the, of the Philistines and we had a party or whatever. And here's the troops and they're, they're <laughs> huddled around the mulberry bush. <laughs> That's probably where they came up with that song. Here we go around the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. I just, come on, <laughs> go with me for a second. But, but seriously, they were waiting to hear the rustling of the mulberry bush. They were waiting. I mean, these are warriors. They're, they're ready to fight. And yet they're waiting. They're waiting around the mulberry bush. And I, I can just imagine David probably wrote this verse down. And maybe he didn't write it for this situation. But he wrote it in Psalms 37, verse 23. Really powerful verse. Actually, all of us know the verse. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered. Right? They're ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. And, and he delighteth. In other words, we are the ones that have to delight in the way that God has ordered our steps. I mean, that's powerful right there. But, but can you imagine? What are you doing, David? Oh, we're just waiting. <laughs> why, why are we waiting here? We, we already beat them guys yesterday. We already beat them down. But, but they're waiting by a mulberry bush for, for the rustling of the, of the mulberry bush. Because then, what God has said, right? Then I will go before you and I will give you the fight again. You will be victorious again. But he had to do what God said. Amen? It doesn't always look right like it should look. <laughs> I, I, I love the fact, though, that David knew the outcome of a future event. <laughs> Have you ever thought about that? 
because God knows my tomorrows. Amen? God knows my past. He knows this very moment, and he knows what's going to happen tomorrow. We only know this moment, and we imagine or our vision or our, our feelings or our desires for whatever's going to happen in the future, but we don't have control of what's going to happen. But David knew. He knew that he would be victorious in a future event. Isn't that powerful? Just think about it. He, he knew that he would. <laughs> My steps are ordered, he said. My de I delight in God's way. <laughs> see, see we're, all, we're always sad and downtrodden as a Christian because woe is me and I have to listen to God. But I'm going to tell you, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not hard to be a Christian because God knows my future. <laughs> he has already given me the victory in my future. Yeah. He's already written it all out. I don't have to fight it. I just have to walk it out. I have to delight in God's way. That's so powerful when you think about it. If I could just get happy about God's way. That's, that's powerful right there. Because what, what stress will start to go away. Hmm. Right. Amen. Let, let, me, let me give you another picture, if I can. Acts 2, verse 1 through 4. Let me give you this. This is the, the Pentecostal experience, okay? It says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord. They all had a Honda. And they got in it as, as, as a, and in one accord. And they were in one place. One accord, one place. Say it with me. One accord, one place. Right? One accord, one place. And then it says in verse 2, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house, and they were, were the house where they were sitting. And, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And I, I, I want to break this, these, these, these four verses out. I want to break it out, and I want to do it like this. And if we just look up and highlight these words in there, it says, and when, and they, it's their response to God. And when God said go and wait, that's what they did. They went and waited, right? That sounds a little familiar to David's story, doesn't it? When you connect it in there, let's connect the stories here, all right? It, it, it says, and, and when, and, and, and they, okay? They, they were all in one place. Waiting for the sound, amen? Waiting for the, the rustling of the mulberry bush. That's what the, the troops were doing. Uh, they, were, they were all there together, and, and they all had purpose. It was their response to what God had said, right? If God says something, we should do it. We should listen, amen? And then, and then there's two more ver words here. And suddenly, and there. See, that was their observance of what God was doing, Amen? It wasn't something they did. It's something that God did. Amen? So, so God, God requires something from us. It usually involves listening and waiting. I'm going to tell you right now. It's listening and waiting. And then, and then God's response is always a sudden thing. <laughs> and there, because God shows up right there. Amen? Wherever he, it, it is that he is appointed for you to, to wait or to listen, that's where he'll show up. Amen? He's not going to show up. Uh, two states over. He's not going to show up in Missouri when you're in Illinois. He's not going to show up uh, over in some other, other situation when you run away from the one that you're supposed to be waiting in. He, he's not going to do that. He's going to show up right there where he said, wait. Right there where he said, sit in the chair. Right there where he said, stop, wait, listen. That's where he's going to show up. It's time to listen and it's time to observe. Amen? Because right there is where God will show up. Not another place. Not, not over there. It's not an imagination that I have. It's the exact place he called me to. Amen? It's important for you to know that. Oof, that's a little strong, maybe. Let me give you another word. Be before. Before. God is before me. Amen? I, I, I love the word that we, when I just say that. I, and God is before me. Think about that. Can you say that with me? And God is before me. Say it again. And God is before me. See, now, if you turn to your neighbor right now and say that to him, it would be a declaration. And God is before me. You see what's happening? And God is before me. It's before I, what I'm feeling. It's before what I'm thinking. It's before what I, 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 my experience tells me. God is before that. Amen? He is before me. He's the one that goes before me. Amen? 
He's going before me. When I walk out that door, he's already walked before me out that door. He's already prepared the place for, for me before I get there. <laughs> he's already there. I, I think that's powerful. He's before me. But when you hear the sound, then you move, right? Uh, then you will know that God has gone before you. When you hear the sound, <laughs> when you hear the voice of God, then you know. See, then you, can, then you can rest assured. Then you can go in peace. Then you can understand. Yeah. I, I, uh, what a comforting thought that is, to know that God has already been where, wherever it is that I'm going. <laughs> He's already been there. I don't, have to, I don't have to worry. I don't have to get upset. I don't have to get excited. I don't got to try to work it out my own way. I just got to go with the flow of whatever God is doing, amen, in my life. That's true. 1 Corinthians uh, 6, 19 and 20. Uh, uh, I'm just kind of skimming over a lot of this stuff. I, I, I should really slow down someday and blow every verse apart word by word, which is how, what I love to do. But 1 Corinthians uh, 6, 19 and 20, it says, Don't you realize... That your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Don't you realize? Have you ever thought about that? That, that God lives in me, and this is, this is, this is church, right? He's, he's in me. I am the church. The church is not a building. It's not a, a facility. It's not a, an organi organization. It's an organism. Amen? It's growing constantly in me. Amen? It's growing in you. Uh, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit, he lives in me. Amen? who lives in you and is given to you by God. Hmm, think about that. God has given you the Holy Spirit to live in you. Amen? It, you, you do not belong to yourself. Think about that. You don't belong to yourself. Yeah, for God has bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. I, I, I can add on to that verse, uh, Romans 12, verse 1. Uh, Paul is begging you. He says, I beg you, brothers and sisters, I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your body <laughs> a living sacrifice. Even as I breathe and move and, and have my, my, my uh, Mars Hill, it talked about that in the, in the, in the book of Acts, but, but we, we are created to move and breathe and have our being in him. Amen? He, he is my God. Right? This is his body. Amen? I present it to you. <laughs> Did, did, I wrote this down. If nobody gives their body, there is no body. <laughs> it's kind of stupid, right? But if nobody gives their body, there is no body. Because that's what the church is. People who give their body as a living sacrifice become the body of Christ. Amen? We become that body. But if nobody gives their body... There is no body. That's fairly powerful. I should charge money for that one. <laughs> Jesus did it for us as an example. He did it for us as an example. <laughs> These are, this is a good principle for leadership right there. We should be the example to those around us of how we should live our life as a Christian. Amen? Yeah. If, if, if nobody's buying what you're selling, maybe you don't have the real thing. Think about that. If nobody wants what you have, nobody wants what you have. <laughs> it's time to re-examine what it is you have or think you have. Take the truth that you think you have inside of you and try it against the truth in the Word of God and see which one wins. And if the word wins, you give it up, what you have, for the true riches that come from the word of God. Amen? Hmm. You know, let me just wrap this up. This week on Monday, I came, I came to work, and someone bought me a gift over the weekend and left it in my office. And, and in, in, it, what it is, is a picture. And, and the picture said, uh, if, if you come to a door, it says, if, you're, if you come to a door and it's not open, you should praise God in the hallway, is what it says. And, I, and it was sitting next to the wall, and in my, in my office I have a fire hydrant. And it was sitting next to the fire hydrant, and I, 
and I, and I got on my uh, down low because I want to take a picture of just the picture. And as I scanned with the camera, I noticed the fire hydrant. So I, 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 I moved it over and I got a picture of the picture praising God in the hallway and the fire hydrant. And uh, I took a picture of it and I, and I, and, and then I, I just was busy. So I, I got busy and I started, I went on about doing what I was doing. And a few minutes went by and I, I went back and I was looking at the picture because I thought, well, I'll, I'll post it on Facebook. And so I did. I posted on Facebook. And, uh, uh, and, and, and as I began to look at the picture, I, I realized that all of us have so much potential. That's the fire hydrant. Because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's water pressure uh, under valves and caps. Okay, and, and I think we have so much potential as, as Christians, as a church, as an organization, as, 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 as whatever God has given us is the potential that, that we have right, to give away but it's, it's, it's captured. And, and I thought about praising God in the hallway because often we see the doorway as a block, as, a, as what's stopping us. And often, often we begin to look at those things and we go, I don't understand it. I, don't, I, I just want to run right through the door. But yet the door is there on purpose and we should. Uh, and, and so I thought about having, having spiritual patience coupled with my potential. Because if God knows the potential of my life, and then he also knows the right timing to be for, for that potential to be released. Amen? Amen? And if I would trust God enough, if this is the this is the problem. If if we don't trust God enough, we'll run ahead of God and try to make something happen that really wasn't supposed to happen at that moment. Or it'll be in the wrong order or the wrong step or the wrong place or the wrong time or the wrong state. But God is looking for somebody, somebody who would have the spiritual patience to allow God to take all of the potential that I have and use it in exactly the right way. It might be to put out a fire in someone's life. It might be to say the right word. It might be uh, the next worship song. It might be the next greatest message. It might be the, the, the most profound statement ever. But God wants to do that for all of us and in and through all of our lives. And yet we hold the key to that in the listening and to stepping. When he says, go, I go. Amen? Potential spiritual, coupled with spiritual patience. Amen? I, th I think that's a powerful thought right there. Hmm. Did, did you know, you, you got time for one more verse? <laughs> Good, because I'm going to give it to you anyways. 1 Corinthians. Oh, we, have such, we have such great potential. Turn, turn to your neighbor and just tell him, you, you have so much potential. You have so much potential. You just need a little patience to tell your other neighbor. <laughs> you need a little patience. <laughs> Can I give you three L's, right, before I move on to this verse? Look, listen, and lead. Look, listen, and lead. Look, listen, and lead. Three L's. Those are important. Hmm. Did you know that God is the leader, not us? Yes. You ever thought about that? You're not the leader. I'm not the leader. He's the leader. I need to look to him. I need to listen to him. Mm -hmm. I need to let him lead me. Amen? I can't lead you if I can't let him lead me. You see how that goes? It, it's, it's, it's almost as if I have to honor God before he'll honor me. Isn't that powerful? Mm -hmm. If I'm not going to honor God, why would he honor me? You know, if, you, if you're not going to honor pastor, okay, then maybe God won't ever honor you. You see how that principle works? Let me, let me give you something else. Let me give you something else. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. It, and it, it, it just goes blah, 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 blah. Waiting, blah, 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 confirm, blah, 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 fellowship. Okay, and you can go back and read all that yourself. But I want to give you these three words. Waiting, 
my waiting confirms my fellowship. That's what I got from those verses. My waiting on God confirms not only in me, but in all of you, but in all of the world, that I am in fellowship with him. Amen? Amen. Isn't that powerful? I, I, if, if I'm not willing to wait, not willing to be patient, I'm probably not listening. I'm probably not listening to God. And he's probably not talking to me. Because why would you talk to somebody that doesn't listen? I mean, if you've been married, have anybody been married? <laughs> you know, if someone stops listening, you stop talking. That's, what, that's a natural response. And why would we think it'd be different with God? Hmm? Amen? Amen? <laughs> My potential is only as great as my spiritual patience. Amen? Amen? I'm going to put that down. i got to put that down. I can keep going. Woo! Let me, let me just pray for you. Let me just pray for you wherever you are right now. Hmm. I believe that God has spoken tonight. And I believe that he wants to move in your life like never before. And I, my challenge to you tonight wherever you are, is that you would take a moment and listen to what God is saying to you. Because he's speaking. He's always speaking. He never stops speaking. We, we stop listening. And so my challenge is, is this, simple. It's simple. Just listen to what God is saying. You know, when we pray... We tend to tell God everything and how to do it and what he should be doing. And, and what he does is he listens. But he's, he's wanting and desiring you to listen to him. Amen? So, so let me just pray. Lord, I just pray right now that you would just touch the hearts of all those that are listening to my voice right now. And I pray, Lord, that you would go and establish yourself fresh and new in their hearts, in our hearts. And Lord, we give you our heart right now. We give you our future, and we give you our past. But in this moment right now, we ask that you would speak. Speak to us. Tell me what to do, God. Tell me what to do, God, and I'll do it. We give you our life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is so good right now. I, I just feel the Lord right now is speaking to somebody. And he's saying, I have already spoken to you. You already know what you need to do. Trust me, he says. Trust me. It takes faith to trust God who, who we don't see. <laughs> but if you, if you have a Bible, you can read every word. And he will, he will speak to you. And he will move you. And he will open up your eyes and give you understanding and wisdom. We talked about that tonight. He gives it to us and he doesn't get mad about the fact that we're asking for wisdom. He doesn't get mad. So, Lord, we just give you our potential. We give you our dreams. We give you our hopes. We give you our desires. And we rest in the fact that you have already written out our, our story. It's written down. And we trust you with that. We just trust you with that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.